didn't see you there. Oh, where are my manners? Hi, my name is Kathy Chan, and now that I've gotten your attention, let's talk about some calculus. Well, you know your everyday functions, f of x equals blah blah blah. Well, I'm about to put the fun in function, because today, we're going to learn about representing functions with power series. What is a power series, you ask? Well, it is a function that can be represented exactly by an infinite series. Wow, sounds incredible, right? But it's not, not with this sweet blessing in hand, geometric series. What's a geometric series? Well, if you've not seen it before, you better familiarize yourself with it, because it's going to be your new BFFL. With the geometric series, you can finally find the total vertical distance your ball travels when it falls and bounces infinitely with diminishing reverberations at every bounds. And I know you've been wondering that all your life. No? Okay, let's move on. You might say, wow, Kathy, that was complicated and confusing, and I'm scared, and I need my baby blinky. But wait, listen to my breakdown, we'll be able to see what a piece of blueberry cheesecake this baby really is. First, let's understand the convergence of a geometric series. You might have seen this before. It is saying that if you have a series that looks like this, it miraculously sums up to this. Now, this is where the magic happens. Take a look. If you let a equal one and r equal x, darn diggity right, it looks like your every other day function f of x equals one over one minus x. Isn't it just wonderful how life works out? The function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x is represented exactly by the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n. But remember, this is true provided that the absolute value of r is less than 1. Meaning, it differs from the original function by that it only represents from negative 1 to 1. While the function is defined for all x not equal to 1. Now, let's take a look at some examples. Find a power series representation for the following functions. Example 1. f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared. The objective is to manipulate the function into the form 1 over 1 minus x. As you probably recognize, this function is already pretty close to that form. We just need to tweak it a little bit. Baby steps, right? First step, we want to change that sign from plus to minus. To do this, we factor out a negative one from x squared, resulting in one over one minus negative x squared. This is simply still equivalent to the original function, but now we have the form a over 1 minus r, with 1 as a and negative x squared as r. Next step, we can put it into a series form, summation from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n. So we will write it as such. Okay, this equals summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 times negative x squared to the n. Now that we've put it in the series format, we need to simplify the series. The negative sign on the x squared can be brought out of the parentheses by putting negative 1 to the n. This is still equivalent by that your terms are still negatives when n equals odd numbers. For example, when n equals 3, negative 1 to the n is still negative 1 making the term negative, as it will when the negative was in the parentheses with the x squared. This is important to remember because whenever you see a negative sign in parentheses with anything to the n plus whatever power, you can factor out the negative this way. The squared can be multiplied by the n because when a power is raised to a power, they are multiplied. Therefore, your final answer should be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity 
of negative 1 to the n times x to the 2n. Let's try another example. Example 2. f of x equals x over 1 plus x. We've learned from the previous problem how to deal with those plus signs. So you should know that we would factor out a negative 1 from the x to get x over 1 minus negative x. Notice that this time, your a is x and your r is negative x. The series format of this one would be the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of x times negative x to the n. To simplify this one, you should know from the previous problem to factor out negative 1 to the n power from the negative x to the n power. After that, you have x times x to the n power. When the same base is multiplied, their exponents are added. Since the first x is raised to the first power and the second x is raised to the nth power, you add their exponents for them to become x to the n plus 1. Ready for the next one? Let's move on. Example 3. f of x equals x over 2 plus x. Hmm. This is tricky. Remember, we want to tweak the function so that it looks like a over 1 minus r. But there's a 2 where the 1 should be. Any guesses as to what we can do to make it a 1? If you guessed factor out a 2, you are correct! We factor out a 2 from the denominator to get x over 2 times parentheses 1 plus x over 2. For those of you confused on how the x became an x over 2, keep in mind that when you factor out, you're dividing. So factoring out 2 from x gives us x over 2. And here, we see a plus sign again. Sorry for being repetitive, but practice makes perfect, right? We factor out a negative 1 from x over 2 to get x over 2 times parentheses 1 minus negative x over 2. The 2 we factored out from the denominator is a constant, and we will treat it as such. The series format is the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 half x times negative x over 2 to the nth power. When there is a constant in your series, you can move it outside of your summation and it would still be the same. So let's move the half outside to focus on simplifying what's inside. Let's leave the x alone, for now at least, and you see, you can factor out the negative from the x over 2. So we get negative 1 to the nth power times x over 2 to the nth power. In the next step, we will leave everything alone and work on the x over 2 to the nth power. When a fraction is raised to a power, it is the same as the numerator being raised to that power and the denominator being raised to that same power. So we get x to the nth power over 2 to the nth power. Now, putting to use what we learned from the previous problem, that you can simplify the multiplication of same bases by adding their exponents, we can do so here. We add the powers of the x's for it to become x to the n plus 1. Hey, don't forget the half on the outside. There's further simplifying to do. We have a denominator of 2 inside the summation. The same base of half means that we can also add their exponents. With that last step, we get our final answer of the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the nth power times x to the n plus 1 power over 2 to the n plus 1 power. Let's do one last example. Example 4 f of x equals 2 over parentheses 1 minus x squared. 
This one requires a bit of knowledge on differentiation. You have to notice that this function is actually the derivative of 2 over 1 minus x. If you're not sure how, let me show you. Deriving 2 over 1 minus x should be simple if you know the chain rule. First, we multiply the expression by the power x is raised to. Since x is in a parentheses, we use the power of the parentheses. So, since the parentheses is in the denominator, we multiply by negative power. In this case, negative 1. Next, we subtract 1 from the exponent. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. This is the exponent of the derivative. Last step to deriving when x is in a parentheses, we multiply the expression by the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. In this case, the derivative of 1 minus x is negative 1. So, the derivative we get is 2 over parentheses 1 minus x squared. Now that I've shown you how this is the derivative, we can write 2 over parentheses 1 minus x squared as the derivative of its summation form, which is summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 2x to the n. To find the series representation of this function, we would have to derive the series. Let me explain how to differentiate a series. It is not different as how you would a normal function. Like the first step to deriving a regular function, you want to take the power of x and multiply the function with it. So here, we multiply the series by n. Next, we subtract 1 from the power of x. Here, our new exponent would be n minus 1. When deriving a series, we have to keep in mind to add 1 to where n begins. In this case, 0 plus 1 is 1. So the derivative series begins from n equals 1. The derivative of the summation from n equals 0 to infinity of 2x to the nth power is the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of 2nx to the n minus 1 power. And now we have our answer. Moving the constant 2 outside of the summation, our final answer is 2 times the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of nx to the n minus 1. Let's review what we've learned today. We've learned that to represent a function with a power series, you must manipulate the function to the form 1 over 1 minus x. We've learned that you should factor out a negative expression to the n by factoring out negative 1 to the n. We've learned that you can combine like bases by adding their exponents. We've learned that deriving a series follows the same chain rule as deriving a regular function. Well, that's all. I hope this video helped you understand representation of functions with power series. With the knowledge of this sorcery, you can now easily represent functions with power series. Again, I'm your host, Kathy Chan. Thank you for learning calculus with me. You have a fantabulous day.